there, there seems to be <clears throat> so much what I call blind corruption. And you know as I do, we have just got rid of possibly the most corrupt government the world has known. Uh, and is it any wonder that we are in this situation? Uh, and, and I blame the Prime Minister and the head of MI6 uh, in my mind because they are too young, they are too ignorant and they are too silly to come to people like me and ask what the truth is. That's all we want is the truth, really, isn't it? <clears throat> would, it is. you, would you like to speak to the Prime Minister personally? <clears throat> I... As soon as we had the new government, I went straight along and saw my Member of Parliament. I gave him a document with all of the references uh, listing every danger there was to the planet, the ecosystems, the environment, children, embryos uh, that we haven't yet discussed. And I'm yeah. sorry, we should have come back to that, my fault. Um, I, I asked him and I said, in case he thinks I'm just a total nutter and mad, I want to see the Prime Minister, I want to explain this, I want to take with me a consultant solicitor, I want to take with me a doctor from Imperial College, both whom are experts in radiation law and radiation, and I would like to see the Prime Minister. And to cut a long answer short, the Prime Minister does not have 20 minutes to give me in the next four years. And I think that is pathetic, absolutely pathetic and disgraceful. I agree. Do they have any idea of what sort of damage they're doing to the world to children? To no, uh, and this is where I come back. To me, they are silly boys. <clears throat> you have the Prime Minister who is young, you have the head of MI6 who is young, you have these what I call young boys with no disrespect to their age coming out of university with these electronic degrees and they think, aha, I can make a microwave box that will do this and do this and they sell them and they go on the market, but they don't have the wherewithal to come back to people of my generation that grew up with microwave radiation to say, well, just give me one hour of your time before you do this and let me explain what is really going on. Would you like me to go back to embryos? Or do you I would just like <coughs> to say, <coughs> okay. is there a cover-up on the numbers of cancers that we're seeing related to microwaves? Um, the word cover-up, I would not agree with. Maybe I would. I, I maybe I'm, I'm not clever enough to understand the full implications. There is certainly uh, statistical anomalies uh, whereby I have one document where 40,000 in one year, 40,000 brain tumours were re-diagnosed as endocrine cancers. So they do not go on the brain tumour statistical list. So what the industry can actually say and the government is, OK, so you're using a phone, but look at the mobile phone brain tumour statistics, they're actually going down. And I know one person that said, this proves that they're actually preventing brain cancers. That is most definitely <coughs> a statistical anomaly. Yes. Um, so 40,000 brain tumours in the UK are reclassified. Whether they're in the UK, the document didn't say. Um, it probably did, but it's a huge tome. Um, and I cannot be sure whether it was one country or several countries. Um, I just know it's from a brain tumour registry. And I, I just know that 40,000 are being reclassified as endocrine cancers. And the brain tumour registry is horrified by this. But I could not be specific whether it was just one country.
Okay, and that would obviously skew the statistics <coughs> if those 40,000 brain tumours are in the stats. It would be fairly blatantly obvious to most people that mobile phones are causing brain cancers. Oh, it's, it's only half the story. If you look at some of the studies where they have uh, shown that there are no cancer rises from transmitters or mobile phones... What the industry and the governments are very, very good at doing is they will do a study, they will write up the study, they will give it to the press, the press will publish it. What they do not do is what I have to do. If I write a research paper, <clears throat> for instance, I, I've, I've had one, I, I've just finished one, you then send it to an independent magazine for peer review. The independent the magazine, they have said to me, we will now take about eight weeks with our experts to go through every word, every reference. If we deem it okay, we will publish it. If not, we will send it back for something to be rewritten. Now, what the governments are good at doing one government scientist will peer review another government scientist's own document. Uh -huh. um, or a government will go to a university with specific instructions for the university to carry out a specific experiment. But what they do not do is send these experiments to an independent top-level magazine like Nature and say, we found this, will you publish it? What they will do is they will give it to the press. The press bring it out the next day, cancers are going down, mobile phones are found to be safe. But then, when you get hold of the paper, <clears throat> and this was one particular experiment uh, on mobile phones, and you find they discounted everybody under a certain age, they then discounted everybody over a certain age. They discounted people who used mobile phones for work. They discounted people who had two. They discounted people for some other reason. And in fact, you ended up with this particular paper, you only ended up with 16% of the total people that were being tested being on the statistics. And then when you enlarge this 16%, it's like saying, we've looked at 16% of the people in Germany and enlarging it for the whole population and saying, you know, cancers have gone down. You know, it, it's easy to... You, you can manipulate statistics yeah. until you go blue in the face. They're so easy to mess around, but what they will not do is send their results to a magazine, the, a world-leading magazine like Nature or Scientific America or Scientific American Mind and have them independently peer-reviewed and published, like, like I have to do. Yeah. So in other words, you're saying, <clears throat> A, they rig the experiment or, well, make the experiment very favourable for themselves, mm. and B, they cherry-pick the statistics? Not necessarily. There are some genuine experiments that have shown that microwave irradiation has not been shown to cause illness. And I can explain this. Uh, we're in Germany now. If I made every single person in Germany smoke 20 cigarettes a day and drink... 10 pints of beer a day. Some people would have no effect. Some people would have some effect. Other people would be violently ill. People are not homogeneous. They do not all follow the same path. And so you can concentrate on people. There will be experiments where the majority of people have not shown an ill effect. But when you look at all of the experiments, in fact, we know we looked at the World Health Organization database a couple of years ago on all of the experiments, 
the ones that showed nothing and the ones that did show things. <clears throat> and the overall result was that 80%, 8 out of 10 of the papers on the World Health Organization database showed from low-level continuous microwave irradiation cancers, an increase in cancers for people living near transmitters, microwave sickness and neurological problems. Eight out of ten. And there will always be experiments done properly that show nothing. But overall, eight out of ten do show something. So if the WHO's own library of, <coughs> of research shows that eight out of ten studies confirm that mobile phones, Wi-Fi, cordless phones, etc., etc., are dangerous, what is their stance then? The World Health Organization were challenged by the European Parliament to make a decision on the health of the world concerning all of this. And in the written reply, which I have from the European Parliament, the World Health Organization said that they will not comment on the effect on adults until 2015. They only started studying children in 2009, last year. So they will not be able to comment on the effect on children possibly for another 15 to 20 years. So the World Health Organization will say nothing on adults until 2015 and nothing on children probably until 2020, 2025. So there is absolutely no guidance from the WHO. So the implications <laughs> of that are your children could be getting very sick but we won't be able to tell you for another 15, 20 years. Absolutely. Good luck. Absolutely. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Yep. That is it. <clears throat> kind of startling, really, isn't it? It is so horrific that if it wasn't real, if somebody wrote a book on this, I would say, this is so stupid, you could never make up a story like this. But, and it all goes back, it goes back to the 50s, the 60s and the 70s when microwaves were found to be such a perfect weapon and so dangerous to the military that the United States Defence Intelligence Agency told the Western governments to keep this quiet. And they did. And this is why we have this.